Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel where I review the latest Korean dramas and share my thoughts and opinions. Today, I'm going to talk about Captivating the King, a historical romance drama that just finished airing on TVN and Netflix. If you haven't watched it yet, be warned, there will be spoilers ahead. Captivating the King is a story of love, revenge, an intrigue set in the Joseon dynasty. It stars Jo Jung-suk as Yeon, a miserable king who has no one around him that he can trust and is in danger of both royal and political power struggles, and Shin Se-kyung as Kang Hee-soo, who disguises herself as a man and becomes a spy to take revenge on him for killing her father. However, things get complicated when they develop feelings for each other and discover secrets that could change everything. The drama has 16 episodes and it follows a weekly release schedule. The series finally aired on Sunday, 10th March 2024. The drama has received positive reviews from critics and viewers alike, who praised the acting, the cinematography, the music, and the plot twists. The drama also achieved high ratings, reaching a peak of 14.7% nationwide and 17.2% in Seoul. So, what did I think of Captivating the King? Well, I have to say that I enjoyed it. It was a captivating, pun intended, drama that kept me on the edge of my seat. The chemistry between the leads was amazing, and I loved how they portrayed the complex emotions of their characters. The supporting cast was also great, especially Lee Shin Young as Kim Myung Ha a nobleman who is good at both archery and swordsmanship and who has a crush on Kang Hee Soo. He was so adorable and loyal, and I felt sorry for him when he realized that Kang Hee Soo was a woman and loved the king. The drama also had a lot of suspense and surprises, as the plot unfolded and revealed the true identities and motives of the characters. There were some shocking moments, such as when Yi In found out that Kang Hee Soo was his childhood friend Kang Mong Woo, who he thought had died, and when Kang Hee Soo learned that her father was the mastermind behind the assassination attempt on Yi In. The drama also had some heartbreaking scenes, such as when Yi In had to execute his brother Yi Sien, who was involved in a coup, and when Kang Hee Soo sacrificed herself to save Yi In from an arrow. The drama also had some beautiful and romantic scenes, such as when Yi In and Kang Hee Soo played Badook together when they confessed their feelings under the moonlight and when they shared their first kiss. The drama also had some funny and cute scenes, such as when Kang Hee Soo pretended to be a man and had to deal with awkward situations, and when Yi In teased her and called her, my spy. The drama also had some flaws, of course. Some of the episodes felt a bit draggy and repetitive, and some of the characters were underdeveloped or underused. For example, I wish we could have seen more of the king's mother, who seemed to have a mysterious past, and of the court Lady Dong, who was supposed to be a spy but didn't do much. I also felt that the ending was a bit rushed and unsatisfying. I won't spoil it for you. But let's just say that it left me with a lot of questions and emotions. Overall, I think Captivating the King was a great drama that had a lot of potential and delivered a lot of entertainment. It was a drama that made me laugh, cry, and swoon. I would recommend it to anyone who likes historical romance dramas with a twist. I would give it a rating of 8.5 out of 10. That's it for my review of Captivating the King Season 1. What did you think of the drama? Did you like it or hate it? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more drama reviews. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!